Good afternoon and welcome to St. James Anglican Church in Dundas. From wherever you are, wherever you are joining us, we welcome you to this time when we gather to keep the week of prayer for Christian unity, to hear words and reflections, to hear prayers, and to hear music that will help us to remember the theme of Christian unity this week. The week of prayer for Christian unity always takes place between the feast of the confession of St. Peter on the 18th of January and the feast of the conversion of St. Paul on the 25th of January. It is a time when Christians all over the world remember and pray for the unity of the church. I am joined today by Norma Coe, the chairperson of the Association of Dundas Churches and a parishioner here at St. James, and I'm very pleased that she is with us, not only to assist me in this service, but also to represent the Association of Dundas Churches. And as we present this to people in Dundas and beyond, we want you to know that the Association of Dundas Churches is a strong and vibrant symbol of Christian unity that has existed for many years in this community and continues to do good work of the church and will continue to do so, we pray, for many years to come. I'm also joined by Richard Hansen, the director of music here at St. James, who will play for us this afternoon. And I want to express my uh, deep gratitude to Frank and to Janet, who are here helping us with technical things and to invite you into a time of reflection and joy and hope and prayer. We meet today as people who live as neighbors on a land commonly called Canada, on the northern portion of the land which many indigenous people have long called Turtle Island. We acknowledge that these lands have been the traditional home of indigenous people from time immemorial and the homeland of the Métis people. As followers of the way of Jesus, we also recognize the call to be people who seek justice, healing, and right relationship with all the people of the land and gather together with and in care for this land. As we gather here on this part of Turtle Island, we acknowledge the stewardship of the Haudenosaunee and Anishinaabe peoples in this territory covered by the Upper Canada Treaties, directly adjacent to Haldimand Treaty territory. In so doing, we commit ourselves to living together with our neighbors with respect and care. As we begin this time together, I invite you to sit and be comfortable. Join us together as Richard plays Rosie Medre by Ray Fun Williams.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we are united today with fellow believers in the four corners of the world as we gather to pray for the visible unity of the church. We do this with worship resources prepared by the Middle East Council of Churches. Our texts are inspired by the visit of the Magi to the newborn king. As described in the gospel according to St. Matthew, we saw a star in the east and we came to worship him. Let us fix our eyes on the star that was seen in the east and allow it to lead us too. Let us come into God's presence with thanksgiving and joy, bringing all the sick, the suffering, the marginalized, the refugees, and the uprooted before him, knowing that God can dispel our darkness with his light. As we pray today for the unity of the church, may we and our communities also be lights that guide others to Jesus, the Savior. Glory be to you, Father Almighty, for you have revealed yourself through your creation and invited all people to stand in your presence. We have seen the star of Jesus in our lives and have come to worship him just as the Magi did. We offer him ourselves today and we ask for the presence of the Holy Spirit among us. Unite us with one another as we come from the north and from the south and from the east and from the west. Old and young, men and women, to bow down before you and offer you homage, our heavenly King. Amen. Amen. We glorify you, O Lord, creator of heaven and earth, for you have set the lights in the vaults in the sky. You separated light from darkness and arranged signs to mark sacred times and days and years. You studded the firmament with stars. How majestic are your works. The heavens declare your glory and the skies proclaim the work of your hands. We glorify you, O Lord. We praise you, for you did not abandon us despite our rebellion, but sent your Son to brighten our darkness and be our light and our salvation. In him was life, and that life was the light of all humanity. And the light shines in the darkness. We praise you, O Lord. We worship you, O Lord, for you accompany us in the chaos of our life through the power of your Holy Spirit. You light our paths and you give us wisdom and faith in a world of untruth and doubt. We worship you, O Lord. We thank you, O Lord, for you send us into the world to reflect this light around us in our various churches and diverse cultures and to witness Jesus, the one true King, offering ourselves to him. We thank you, O Lord. May all the peoples bow down before you and worship you. you have often prefer, we have often preferred darkness, but you have given us light. Therefore, we come to you confessing our sins and saying, We confess before you that we have turned away from your ways and disobeyed your ordinances. We have disfigured your good creation and squandered its resources through our consumerist practices. We have polluted your rivers and seas and poisoned your air and soil and contributed to the extinction of many species. We have acted selfishly towards our brothers and sisters we have allowed our own needs and desires to prevail over our commitment to justice. 
We have built walls between us and planted the seeds of distrust toward the other. We have separated people based on ethnicity, religion, and gender. And we have claimed Jesus on our side in any war we waged. Forgive all these thoughts and deeds, O Lord, as we come before you in repentance. Almighty, almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, whom you have sent in the fullness of time to redeem all the people, we ask you to have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and transform us into his glorious image so we can shine as a beacon of hope in our troubled world. Almighty God hears our prayers, has mercy on us, and forgives us. Thanks be to God, whom we praise with all our voices. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Richard will play Verseuse by Louis Vierne.
responsive reading of Psalm 8. <clears throat> o Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouths of babes and infants, you have founded a bulwark because of your foes to silence the enemy and the avenger. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established. What are human beings that you are mindful of them, mortals that you care for them? Yet you have made them a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet. All sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, and the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the sea. O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. A reading from Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nations, and you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you, as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onwards and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Gospel reading from Matthew 2, 1 to 12, Visitors from the East. Jesus was born in the town of Bethlehem in Judea during the time when Herod was king. Soon afterwards, some men who studied the stars came from the east to Jerusalem and asked, where is the baby born to be king of the Jews? We saw his star when it came up in the east, and we have come to worship him. When King Herod heard about this, he was very upset, and so was everyone else in Jerusalem. He called together all the chief priests and the teachers of the law and asked them, where will the Messiah be born? In the town of Bethlehem in Judah, they answered, for this is what the prophet wrote. Bethlehem in the land of Judah, you are by no means the least of the leading cities of Judah. For from you will come a leader who will guide my people, Israel. So Herod called, Herod called the visitors from the east to a secret meeting 
and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem with these instructions. Go and make careful search for the child. And when you find him, let me know so that I too may go and worship him. And so they left, and on their way they saw the same star they had seen in the east. When they saw it, how happy they were. What joy was theirs. It went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. They went into the house, and when they saw the child with his mother Mary, they knelt down and worshipped him. They brought out their gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh, and presented them to him. They returned to their country by another road, since God had warned them in a dream not to go back to Herod. How fortunate we are to have these beautiful words crafted by the church in the Middle East. How appropriate that as we pray for Christian unity in the world, we should have resources given to us from the land of the Holy One. And how appropriate that we should hear both from Isaiah about light and darkness and from that wonderful story from the Gospel of Matthew about the Magi coming to worship. It is a story about pilgrimage, a story about devotion, a story about worshiping together, a story about offering gifts, a story about cosmic things like stars and warnings, a story about civic strife, a story about reacting against the powers and principalities of the time. All things that mark our journey as Christian folk coming together to worship, traveling together sometimes all of our lives across great expanses to new homes, new places, gathering together to offer gifts, gifts of ourselves, gifts of our possessions, gifts of our time, gathering together to hear words that inspire us over centuries, over many, many generations, committing ourselves to following stars and starlight and hope committing ourselves to dreaming dreams of peace and love and joy, committing ourselves as followers of Jesus to standing up to injustice, to standing up to racism, to standing up to colonialism, to working together to make a difference in the world that's been given into our care. Since the very beginnings of the church, since Jesus said to Peter, you are my rock, and on this rock I will build my church, and when Jesus said to his disciples, I'm sending you out two by two to baptize all nations, to Jesus saying in the words of John that we all will be one. The unity of the Christian Church has been a hallmark of everything we say and do and all those things for which we pray. It's sometimes not easy. The Christian Church is a wide, varied, divided at times, multifaceted place. And through all of our history, the Church has been a force for good locally, regionally, nationally, internationally. The church has allowed itself to speak to people in their own languages and in their own homes. 
The church has worked for good around the globe and throughout all of the world that God has given us. National churches celebrate together by having ecumenical and interfaith groupings, councils, and studies. Here in North America, we have two very strong bodies, the Canadian Council of Churches and the American Council of Churches, that work together across all sorts of denominational lines and differences, not worried about what keeps us apart, but celebrating those things that bring us together. Similarly, here in our own community, the Association of Dundas Churches calls together all the churches of Dundas and all the people who call the church home to make a difference in the lives of this community, to work together, to reach out, to provide meals and clothes, to provide rest and havens, to be a place that people look to for good news, great news, inspiration, beautiful architecture, beautiful music, significant praying. And we do this reaching out to the entire world and community that God gave into our care. We do this because Jesus urges us, expects us, welcomes us into a ministry of justice and peacemaking and joy. <coughs> we do this in many, many different ways. We do it with such gratitude to all those who have gone before us and those who will follow. We do it recognizing the many, many sacrifices that so many have made, that the church can be a force for good in the community in which we live. Like those magi from so long ago, we make our pilgrimages. We make a pilgrimage to the manger in Bethlehem to worship Jesus. We come together as people who follow stars of hope, and dreams of faith. We come together to provide rest and refuge for the refugee, to provide comfort to the bereft, the sorrowful, to provide food and clothes to those who need them. In this week of prayer for Christian unity, we hold up all the wonderful things that we do together. We hold up all the wonderful communities that we hold in our hearts. We ask God to draw us together into one great company of apostles and saints, following the way of Jesus, following the ways of justice, the ways of dignity for all people, the ways of acceptance and inclusion and love. So may it be so, here and now, and in the days to come. Amen. The Peace Andante by Botezzo.
with faith and confidence, we come in prayer before God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Magi came from the East to pay homage and offer special gifts from their cultures and countries. We pray today for all Christian communities around the world in all of their diversity of worship and tradition. Lord, we ask you to preserve these treasures, particularly in areas of the world where the presence and survival of Christians is threatened by violence and oppression. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. The early years of the Lord's life were marked by violence and massacres at the orders of the despot Herod. We pray for children living in places in the world where violence continues and where its results are tangible. Strengthen, O Lord, the bonds of unity and mutual love among our churches and help us to cooperate and witness to your holy name. Inspire us to work without ceasing in order to defend the oppressed and include the marginalized. Encourage us to stand together in the face of tyranny and oppressive regimes as we seek your kingdom among us. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. After the visit of the Magi, the Holy Family experienced migration through the wilderness and became refugees in the land of Egypt. We pray for all the refugees and uprooted people in this world. Equip us, Lord, to show hospitality to those driven from their homes and grant us the spirit of welcome to those looking for a safe haven. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. The birth of Jesus was good news for all, gathering people from different nations and religions in worship of the Holy Child. We pray for our efforts to seek harmony and dialogue with other religions. Lord, give us humility and patience to walk with others with respect on their journey. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. The Magi returned to their home by a different way. We pray for our churches in this changing world. Lord, help us to find new and creative ways to follow you and to witness to you so that the world may believe. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. When the Magi saw the Holy Child, they rejoiced with great joy. Heavenly Father, fix our eyes on him so we do not lose our way. Unite us in the Lord Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and the life, and who has taught us to pray, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and to deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. With our thanks for joining us and for being part of this very special time together, go now and live as children of light, for the fruit of light is found in all that is good and right and true. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness. Let us wake from sleep and Christ will shine upon us. Peace be to the whole community and love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be with all who have an undying love for our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thanks be to God.